tough times require angry Jesus, fire yeah. and brimstone Jesus, yeah. not like sure. you know, sort of be well, kind to your isn't, neighbor isn't Jesus. Jesus, right? Hi, I'm Ian Bremmer, and welcome to the G Zero World podcast. I'm host of the weekly show G Zero World on Facebook Watch. In this podcast, we share extended versions of the big interviews from that show. This week, I sit down with Charlie Spearing. He's senior White House correspondent for Breitbart News, their go-to guy for all things Trump-related, as well as a self-described blue-collar patriot. Today, I'll ask him about the state of Trump's base, the elusive border wall, and what exactly blue-collar patriotism means. Let's get to it. The G-Zero World is brought to you by our founding sponsor, First Republic. First Republic, a private bank and wealth management company, understands the value of surface, safety, and stability in today's uncertain world. Visit firstrepublic.com to learn more. Here on top of a roof in Washington, D.C., and protests going on in the background. It feels kind of exciting nation's capital evening. And I'm here with Charlie Spearing, who is the senior White House correspondent at Breitbart News. And we're going to talk about draining the swamp and all sorts of other things, Charlie. So I'm going to ask you a couple, just a couple quick questions, White House correspondent. So, I mean, yeah. I, I am kind of interested as young, fresh-faced guy uh-huh. from Breitbart. Yeah. In the White House press scrum. Uh-huh. And and the mainstream media is getting, you know, beaten the crap out of on a daily basis by Trump, who clearly can't stand them, but finds them enabling, right? Right. Um, how do those guys treat you? What's your relationship mm-hmm. like with the press? So I started covering the White House for Breitbart during the Obama years. Yep. And and you were roundly ignored. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I got, some, I got some good questions from Josh Ernest. To his credit, you know, he uh, rewarded me for showing up, you know, and sitting in the seats and raising my hand, so. You seem surprised um, with the first time they asked you a question, yeah. though. I mean, no, I was I baffled. I, I, you know, I turned and I looked behind me and I was like, who are you pointing at? Because he didn't know my name. He's just yep. like, you, sitting there. And I was like, obviously not me, but it was. So, yeah. I had a great relationship with my colleagues. I was a little surprised at how they changed a little bit with the dawn of the Trump administration. In what way? A little more combative. Um, it, it's personal to them. And they take it, it seemed like they take it a little too seriously. Um, they don't realize that the president, maybe they realize it, but they're very frustrated with his, you know, daily banter on fake news and stuff. So of the things that were really controversial in the mainstream media on these issues for Trump, and, you know, it's the NFL and it's Puerto Rico and it's Charlottesville and it's Roy Moore and others, right? Which of those do you think actually mainstream media got completely wrong? He was absolutely right to do this because they don't get it. He's fighting up, he's beating up on those those guys and that's going to work. Where, where did you feel that? Me personally, I think that, you know, you go through politics for a certain amount of time and that certainly didn't understand the Trump campaign, the Trump movement quite as well because a lot of the things were um, shocking to hear. Some of the things he said about McCain and, and others, you know, it just, even though you, but it seems like it took on more of a, you know, and this is what Bannon describes as like the WWE mentality. The world mainstream media is, 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 sort of this fake combat. That and the most popular tweet that Trump has had was depicting CNN as fake news when he pile-drived really? right, all year. That absolutely was number <laughs> I one. I did not know that. Yeah. Didn't hit Obama numbers, right. but still, you know, it was right. pretty good for Trump. So, yeah. Yeah. So for him to just engage in this combat, I think really not only entertains, but it, it's, it makes these supporters of his understand that he's fighting for them. They feel the same way. They don't like to see, they don't, you know, they were frustrated with a lot of the existing norms in politics and media, and they were just happy to see someone come crashing through it. Now, you grew up on a farm uh, in Wyoming. What, what's blue collar patriotism to you? It's the idea that, you know, America is the greatest country in the world. We have these, these uh, Western values. Western values, what, uh, what are they? So you look at the Judeo-Christian tradition, and you look at um, belief in God and moral, the moral life, 
and how that American, the American character is what makes this country great. We're going to talk about morality, right? And we talk about Christian ethics. I mean, obviously, when you start looking at how Trump tweets, how he treats people, the bullying, the name calling, that sort of thing. I mean, clearly, I, I was raised a Catholic. I, my mouth would have been washed out with soap for that sort of thing. You come from a Christian family. You would have gotten a backhand for that. Um, even for those of us that don't do corporal punishment, it's problematic. I mean, how does that how does that work, right? How much is that, well, it's okay, he's a broken vessel, but he's our vessel. And how much of that is really actually damaging that blue-collar patriotism that wants someone that can lead by moral example? You see it in a community of people who are more angry than before and they see the president as a fighter. And this is who the president was when he was running for office. He was just gloves off, bare knuckles, just a fighter. Fighter for everyone who hated, or not maybe hated, or really frustrated with uh, the establishment media, the establishment of Hollywood, the, pol the rise of political correctness. Um, and I think they loved, you know, when I traveled in Iowa and talked to Trump supporters, the, I mean, I, even early in the campaign, I mean, like, why do you like Trump? Because and, and, he tells it like it is, because, you know, he, he's not politically correct. And, and it's just struck me universally across the board. That's, maybe that's what they were telling media, but it, it just seemed like that was the main reason. Tough times require angry Jesus, fire and <laughs> brimstone Jesus, yeah, not like, sure. you know, sort of Well, the president is, isn't Jesus. Jesus, right? So no, 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 want, clearly. Uh, some sort of secular leader that can uh, fight for you, right? That's the... That's the phrase that uh, pol politicians use. And I think Trump was the first one that really embodied that. And, you know, certainly we had a Hillary Clinton on the trail, trail vowing to fight for us, but it just didn't feel like she was ever going to. And, and was Obama unpatriotic in terms of Western values, in your view? Obama was funny because he would go overseas and he would talk about he seemed more interested, and he seemed to be like a very intellectual professor type, right? Every time he went overseas, he seemed more interested in where he was rather than, um, rather than sort of talking about America overseas. And, and the, I was struck by the difference. Every time Trump went somewhere, he was, it was so funny because he would sit there and talk about how great the American economy was, how great America was to do business in. And it seemed like he was always trying to sell America everywhere he went. So when Trump, when Trump goes to Japan mm -hmm. and a golf course and he eats a hamburger, he is reflecting <laughs> blue-collar patriotism. Right, American and, values. And Obama goes and has sushi, and maybe he <laughs> makes the Japanese happy, but he's not doing anything for the American people when he does that, in your view. I don't think it's that simple. I think a lot of Trump supporters uh, were frustrated with Obama criticizing our country overseas. And he did a lot of that when he was traveling, and he would he would suggest that you know we were to blame for some of the conflicts of overseas. And this is where you get the whole Obama was apologizing for America every time he went overseas. I think a lot of that tone that he took is is what um, created that that frustration. So we've talked a lot about Trump supporters and what they want. Uh, do, to what extent do you think that Trump has responsibility slash obligation? to those that don't support him. Right, and this is sort of goes down to Trumpism. What is Trumpism? And if you talk to Steve Bannon, he'll say, you know, the movement is bigger than Trump. It's, it's this economic model. It's this economic nationalism, America first type uh, movement. And we can look at the larger country and see that people of both parties are interested in this. It's not just, you know, your typical conservative. It's your, it, it's, your average American that has been raised on with these values and wants to see them restored in the country. So as far as Breitbart's mission, we want to see uh, the people who don't have a voice anymore in corporate mainstream media, we want to be their voice and, and the whole give voice to the voiceless. And I think we did a lot of that in the campaign and we certainly did a lot of that going forward in this administration. So how do, you, how do you, if you compare yourselves and how you think about Trump and worldview to Fox, mm -hmm. right, wh what's different? They're still like very much issue of the day type people. And I think a lot of correspondents are that. Like this is the issue of the day, we're going to ask the necessary questions about the issues of the day. 
Um, we'll certainly do a little of that, but try to look at it from our our reader's eyes, and it's going to be a little bit different than the, than the typical mainstream media. Charlie Spearing, great to have you here. Look forward to seeing you again. You bet. Thanks for having me. The G-Zero World is brought to you by our founding sponsor, First Republic. First Republic, a private bank and wealth management company, understands the value of surface, safety, and stability in today's uncertain world. Visit firstrepublic.com to learn more. You're listening to the G-Zero World with Ian Bremmer podcast your weekly geopolitical deep dive into the world's biggest news stories, featuring in-depth conversations with global leaders and newsmakers. To get more of GZero's insights on global politics every morning, sign up for our free newsletter, GZero Daily, at gzeromedia.com.